Today with Joseph Prince. God is perfect goodness. God is love. But God gets glory. Think about it. How is truth glorified? How is truth magnified? In the midst of what? Dishonesty. In the midst of cheating. In the midst of all this sin, when there's truth, truth is seen clearly. Think about how much God loves you now even, that you are His child. While you were still a, a sinner, God loved you. God sent His Son while we were all sinners. Amen. We don't care about Him. We have no heart for Him. Amen. We were sinning our way. All we like sheep have gone astray. Yet God sent His Son to become the payment, the ransom for our sins. Amen. God demonstrates His love for us. Praise God. Hello, church. Greetings with grace and mercy on you. That's one of the things that's missing in the preaching and teaching around the world today, the emphasis on the coming of the Lord. And the Lord will bless any ministry that talks about the rapture because they are preparing their people. Amen. That is the blessed hope. And the Bible says when He comes again with the shout of the archangel and the last trump, the date in Christ will rise first. Amen. And we who are alive, I said we who are alive. Again, our Christian position is not to look to the grave, it's to look to the sky. Amen. And when it comes, the dead in Christ will rise first, they'll get their bodies first. And then we will, our bodies, the Bible says, this mortality will put on immortality. Our bodies become instantly the word that you use in the Bible is in the twinkling of an eye. Real quick, in the Greek, atomic second, our bodies are transformed to the point where we are forever young, forever healthy, forever strong to be with the Lord. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So we are looking, that is the blessed hope. If you tell me the rapture will happen when Jesus comes back, there's no rapture. When Jesus comes back, He's referring to Jesus at the end of seven years tribulation. That's not the blessed hope for the church. How is that the blessed hope when we are going through the worst seven years of tribulation that the world has ever seen? No, the blessed hope is, Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. So that where I am, there you may be also. You see, there's no tribulation, no waiting for tribulation, no church. There is no mark of the beast around. Anyone make you afraid. Amen. Jesus Himself said that when you see all these things happening, wars and rumors of wars, pestilences, earthquakes in various places, what did Jesus say? What did Jesus say? For God so loved the world that He... No. <laughs> what did Jesus say? All right, I still give them that verse up there. All right. Oh, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. What's the, the difference between wars and rumors of wars? Now we have a war. Right? Russia, Ukraine. We are, we are in the midst of it. What are rumors of wars? New, a New Living Translation says threats of wars. We hear about threats of wars. Right? But what did Jesus say? See, let's all read that. See that you are not troubled. Look at your neighbor and say, see that you're not troubled. Are you troubled? So if anyone preaches in such a way that tell you that, you know, this is going to happen and we're entering a great tribulation and this is the mark of the beast, don't take this, don't take that, don't take this. We are not there yet. Let me continue. He says, For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences. We, we saw that, right? Pandemics, plagues, pestilences, and earthquakes. Earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. The word sorrows there is the word Odin, which is used for a woman about to give birth. She has birth pangs. Alright, it comes in 
waves, birth pangs. It's not the birth yet, it's birth pangs. So these are signs that the earth, God does not send these things. When God made the heaven, He made the heaven perfect. These things are happening because of man's sins. All right, the Bible says the earth responds to man's sin. All right, in a way that's, you know, like for example, there's a, there's a large country, one of the largest countries in the world, for many years they cannot even have a proper wheat crop. I can tell you, nations that are, have spilled blood, innocent blood, persecuted Christians, they are having problems with poverty, lawlessness, and they can hardly have a good wheat crop. They have to depend on imports. Why? The earth is rebelling. So all these are signs that the earth is rebelling. Amen? We call it climate change. The Bible calls it, all creation is groaning. But when Jesus comes, everything will set, be set right. Amen? As we come to the end of another year, I want to say a huge thank you to our Grace Legacy Builders for all your support. Because of you, we have been able to give away more free resources than ever, launch Grace Academy, our new learning platform, and broadcast on new channels and time slots to reach unchurched audiences. As we close out the year, I invite you to sow your most significant seed into the good ground of our ministry. There is much more land to be possessed, and your support helps us to boldly take more ground for the gospel. Please prayerfully consider making a significant one-time donation or a legacy gift as we conclude this year. Give joyfully without obligation, knowing that your giving helps us continue this mission. God bless you and know that you and your family are always in my prayers. And you know what's the best of all? I'm glad I'll see my mom, I'm glad I'll see my dad, and you will see your loved ones. But we get to see Jesus face to face, the altogether lovely one, the bright and morning star, amen, the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon, the one the Bible calls the desire of all nations, is all lovely, so beautiful. We're going to see him face to face. Amen. Now we can sense his presence with us. Even right now as I speak, you can sense his presence. But his presence is here by the Holy Spirit. But there we'll see him face to face because he did not rise spiritually, he rose bodily. And he went up to heaven bodily. And he will come again bodily. Look to the skies. Your redemption draws near. He does make everything beautiful in His time. You see, the Lord does everything in the right time. Amen. Even our seemingly, you know, uh, bad things, adversities and all that, God allows it to happen at a certain time that we might not see at that moment that it is actually the right time. Because that produces something later on, we don't even realize it is because of this adversity. Amen. How many know that God makes all things work together Amen. for His child's good? Amen. Amen. You are sons and daughters of God. Because of that, your inheritance is that everything, not everything is good, but everything in your life is working for your good. Amen. Amen. Delays even. Traffic lights. For all you know, God knows if you go too fast, you're a person who is very fast, very fast on the road and uh, there's an impending accident in front. So he allows a lot of red lights, and here you are, breathing fire and brimstone, all right, because you're not happy about it. Thank the Lord. Even small things like this. I, I'm using a small illustration because I want you to know that all things means all things. Amen. You gotta believe it. I didn't get the seat I want today, Pastor. All things work together for good. You are meant to be there. You are meant to meet someone maybe. You are meant to be at the right place. And God, always remember, God is protecting you. And I, I know that many of you have testimonies of how, you know, you were restrained from going somewhere and you found out later on there was a problem area. You know, God always, you know, we complain now because we don't see His love for us. He, he looks far ahead. Amen? So Martha and Mary may weep and Jesus weep. 
all right, together with them, with them. But Jesus knew he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. And Lazarus' name will always be there, amen? And he knew the outcome. But they didn't because they live in the moment. Actually, Martha lived in the past and in the future. Mary lived in the moment. And, and there's a Bible verse, very beautiful verse that says, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. The first part there, the accepted time, now is the accepted time, is the word kairos dektos. Kairos dektos. It's a quotation from Isaiah that shows F, time, and razon. Remember the year of razon? So razon and dektos in the Greek is the same word. The time when God's grace profusely abound. Amen. Amen. So when is the uh, kairos dektos? Accepted time? Now. Amen. Now. Now. Amen. With all that, that is happening, that is dark in the world, God is doing great things. Yes. Revivals are breaking out everywhere. Amen. Amen. New covenant revival. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Ministry of righteousness revival. And uh, remember when you... When you listen to end times, you listen to or you watch this kind of thing, do not let your heart be troubled. If the person is saying that, oh, the, the bowls are being poured in the book of Revelation, we are now in the beginning part of the tribulation, great tribulation, the person doesn't know what he's talking. Okay, because the child of God will not go through that. Amen. The Bible says very clearly in Romans 5, it tells us this. It says, but God demonstrates His own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Isn't it amazing? That, think about how much God loves you now even, that you are His child. While you were still a, a sinner, God loved you. God sent His Son while we were all sinners. Amen. We don't care about Him. We have no heart for Him. Amen. We were sinning our way. All we like sheep have gone astray, yet God sent His Son to become the payment the ransom for our sins. Amen. God demonstrates His love for us. Can I have a good amen? amen. All right. In all the evil that has happened, remember evil is not from God. Why did God make Adam and Eve, Pastor Prince, if God knew that they're going to sin? Well, would you still make someone and give them a free choice, knowing that free choice must be free choice? And if free choice is exercised, there might be a possibility they might choose the wrong choice. And because of that, you refuse to make someone with free choice, then the best thing for you is AI. <laughs> but sometimes AI is a misbehave, right? So, God doesn't want an AI. You know, anything with artificial intelligence. He gave us free choice. Amen. He made us in His image. But behind everything God knew, man will fall. But even behind that, God in His full knowledge saw that this evil, this fall of man will bring forth the greatest redemption. Amen. You see, if man continued unfallen, if man continued sinless, right? Not, not sinning, not sinless, but not sinning, innocent, right? There's no guarantee that Adam and Eve, if they succeeded, that their descendants won't. Because by then, there'll be hundreds, times hundreds, there'll be thousands, times thousands, and as time goes on, the earth will be populated. There's no guarantee that someone will not sin. So it's always a state of insecurity. But with the redemption of Christ, God sent His Son, who is the last Adam. Now in Christ, there is a guarantee, an Amen. eternal security for all of us. Amen. Amen. Our redemption is forever. Amen. You are safe eternally. Amen. Amen. There's no worry about, and, and think about that. Adam and Eve, when they were in the garden, they were in charge of the earth. The Bible says, for you and I, through Christ's redemptive work, we are now joined as with Jesus Christ in the center of the universe. Amen. And where is it? Beyond the Milky Way. Beyond what even the greatest uh, telescope that's, that man can build can reach. Amen. One day the Bible says heaven will come down. Literally a whole city will come down on earth. All right, that's not a message altogether. But how many know that God gets glory. God turns even the wrath of man to praise Him. Not that God initiates evil. God cannot. God is perfect goodness. 
God is love, but God gets glory. Think about it. How is truth glorified? How is truth magnified in the midst of what? Dishonesty. In the midst of cheating. In the midst of all this sin, when there's truth, truth is seen clearly. You see, the part of God, mercy, compassion, grace, love, cannot be exercised even though it is inherent in the Godhead even before man fell, it is there, but it cannot be demonstrated unless there's sin. Because grace is for people who have sinned. Yes, Mercy is for those who have failed. Amen. So that part of God cannot be seen until there's a fall. Yeah. So I'm not saying, listen, that we fall so that God's grace can be seen. No, that's how people try to pervert this. But the truth is, that's the truth. Just like truth cannot be seen unless it's among dishonesty, falsehood. Love cannot be seen in its beauty until it is among bitterness, vengefulness, vindictiveness, bitterness, unforgiveness. Then that someone with love comes out. Like Jesus in the midst of Galilee when He walked around, there was hatred around Him. Amen? And yet, He healed the sick, raised the dead, Cleanse the leper. Beautiful. Amen. Grace in the midst of ugliness that our sins have brought into this world. So the problem with the world today, all right, because they save the world, save the world, and that's good. But save the people. The people are causing the problems. And the people are safe, your world gets right. There was a pastor one time, he was uh, preparing his message and he could not get his message and he was, it was Saturday night and he was like, oh God, please speak to me. Give me a message, Lord. All right. Have you been there before? Pastors? <laughs> right. And uh, his little boy came in and asked him, Dad, can you please put this together? And he said, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, um, I'm busy now. Uh, no, not, not put together. Can you help me uh, 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 read to me this story? Then he realized that, you know, that behind the story, there was a story about earth, the globe, and uh, behind, you know, it was a man. So he said, I, I, I think I'll make this whole thing to a jigsaw piece so that my son will be occupied and don't disturb me. I need the word from the Lord. So the son, he cut into a jigsaw, a jigsaw like a jigsaw puzzle. And uh, very quickly, the boy came back. He said, there's no way he knows how the earth is like. And finally, the boy came back. He's pasted everything together and it's perfect. Just like how, you know, the earth is supposed to be, then he said, how do you manage that? Then behind there's a picture of a man. When I put the man right, the earth becomes right. <laughs> got the message? So the pastor got the message. <laughs> when the man is right, his world gets right. Amen. Amen. Amen? It starts with us. You see, we are so proud that we refuse to admit that we have weakness even. And yet we saw the last time I preached, we talked about how God uses the weak things. You know, it's not, it's not that after my weakness, then am I, am I strong? I grow out of my weakness. There is a truth there, out of that, but that's not what Paul was saying. When Paul says, when I am weak, then I am strong. But we, we don't like that, you see. What we want to show on, 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 uh, in the front and exhibit to all the world is strength. You know, we want to show ourselves as being capable to do it all. I'm invincible. I'm, you know, you know, that's how we, we sing and that's how we believe. And all of a sudden, bang, something happens to us and you know, we, are, we are no longer as invincible as we thought. We forget. Our hope is actually in our weakness. Our weakness entitles us. It's our title to God's strength, God's power, my grace. God told uh, Paul, my grace is made complete in your weakness. But you say, I got no weakness, right? Then you're, you're left to yourself. So God uses the, the jawbone of a donkey in the hands of Samson to kill 1,000 men. Amen. God used uh, the ox goat where you prod the goat to move. It's a long piece of, but it's meant not for war, it's meant to prod the, the, the buffalo on, right? And uh, he used that in the hands of Shemgar to destroy 600 Philistines. Amen. 
an earthen vessel in the hands of 300 men, 301 plus Gideon. All right, when Gideon shouts, the trumpet of the Lord, the sword of the Lord, and Gideon, and they all shouted the same, and they smashed the earthen vessel. All the enemies fled. What? Earthen vessel and just a trumpet and the enemies fled? Amen. A piece of bread and juice partaken. Amen. And the tumor disappears. It's because we despise weak things, small things. We forget the Bible says that God uses weak, foolish things, ignoble things to confound the mighty and the wise. Amen. So, the lesson of Job is very simple. Even though he was a righteous man in God's eyes, upright in God's eyes, there was self-righteousness in him, which at the end of his dealings, God allowed him to be tested. He says, I used to hear about you, Lord, but now I see you with my eyes and I abhor myself. Amen. Straight away, God restored everything he lost. Everything he lost. Amen. Amen. Everything. Exactly, you count the number that he lost. The number is given. It's exactly double. The Bible says the Lord restored double. And that's the thing that James tells us to consider the end of the Lord in the case of Job. The end, what did the Lord do for him? He restored everything. But you say that, but the children that he lost, they're the same number. All right? No. Because you know why? It's double. Now he has all these children and exactly the same number are in heaven. So in other words, God is showing, you see, if God doubled the children, that means they are lost. The previous ones were lost. When he goes to heaven, they are there. Everything was doubled. Amen. Can I have a good amen, people? Amen. So he had to go through a lot. God, God had to challenge him about his self-righteousness. Just like all of us. You know, we, we point fingers at others. You know, every time I think about criticizing someone, I have to stop and, and, and judge myself. Joseph Prince, are you guilty of the same thing? Maybe to, not to the extent, but the potential is there. Uh, uh, or I've done it to, to a certain extent. It's good to be like that. You know why? Because it keeps you humble. Right? It keeps you humble. So the lesson that God is teaching us is always, right, to be conscious of weakness, but not to stay there and be conscious of Christ and His power. Amen, Amen in our life. Amen. All the, the, the sins that you all, you know, find that makes you fall on your face all the time. And you don't, don't want to do it, but when a temptation comes, you find it so strong. Do you know why? Because you're still somehow trusting in yourself. You need to come to a place where you tell the Lord, I have this weakness, this is my problem. You know, people who smoke and all that, they tell you, right? I can stop anytime I want. Have you heard that? Yeah. Come on, have you heard that? Yes. All right, people who drink and say, I, I, I can stop anytime I want. Am I right? Am I right or not? Okay, and you all know the truth. You must come to a place you say, I cannot, I need help. Amen. To the Lord, especially. To the Lord. When you say, I can't, He can. Amen. 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 So God uses the weak things of the world to confound the mighty. A little boy, not with a sword in his hand, but a sling stone to knock down the champion, the best soldier there is in the army of the Philistines. Amen. So God's ways are humility, even though He's an awesome God. Amen. His ways are all lowly. Stay low and the dew will fall on you. Stay low and grace will come on you. What a word we've received today. Subscribe to the Joseph Prince Ministries YouTube channel for daily updates. And don't forget to share it with someone you know. You never know who might need to be encouraged today.